Now, what is what are the circuit diagrams? Now, in the circuit diagrams, what you have is you make use of the circuit symbols. Now, these are the circuit symbols which are there in your syllabus, and you should be able to know how to draw them. And if the circuit symbol is given to you, you should be able to spot what it is for. So if there is a circle and a line, that's an open switch. When you join that, that's a closed switch. One big dash and a small dash is a cell. And when you have more than two dashes like this, that becomes a battery. A diode is a device that conducts electricity only in one direction as it has a high resistance in the reverse direction. So you show it with a circle and a triangle and a bar on the top. Resistor is a normal block. When on the resistor, you have this arrow going, that becomes a variable resistor. And when on the resistor, you have something like a graph going up, that's a thermistor. Thermistor is that resistor whose resistance depends on temperature. Variable resistor is that resistor whose resistance keeps on changing. A circle and this across is a bulb. A fuse is a device which breaks the circuit when a current greater than the threshold is passed onto it. So it's a box with a line in the middle. Then if on a resistor you draw arrows coming down, that's a light dependent resistor whose resistance depends on light. A circle and an A is an ammeter, which is a device that is used to measure the current in a circuit. And V is a voltmeter that is used to measure the potential difference in a circuit. And then if you put a triangle and an arrow going up, that is a light emitting diode. Okay, so I hope these circuit symbols are clear to you. And in physics, to draw the circuit diagrams, we make use of the circuit symbol. So let's take one example. So you need to draw a circuit diagram with a battery, bulb and a switch. And for this circuit, you need to measure a current and a potential difference. So I hope you remember for the current, we use a device called ammeter. And you need to remember that ammeter is always connected in next to the battery or the bulb. That is, it is always connected in series and voltmeter will be connected parallel uh, to the bulb. So what we will do is this is the switch, then this is the battery, then this is a bulb, the voltmeter is connected in parallel and ammeter is connected next to it in this series. Okay, so I hope this diagram is crystal clear to you. And always remember ammeter in series and voltmeter in parallel. That is very, very important. Now let us look at the very important di uh, triangle to the formulas that you need to remember. Time, the unit of current is amperes, charges in coulombs, times is in second. So one ampere is one coulomb per second. So current is a rate of flow of charge measured in amperes. One ampere is a current flowing when one coulomb of the charge flows to one second. The second is the voltage, uh, the resistance, sorry. Resistance is voltage divided by current. So resistance is the obstruction to the flow of current, which is measured in ohms. And the last definition is potential difference, which most of the students forget. So please make sure you remember that. Potential difference is work done per unit charge. So potential difference is measured in volts, work done is measured in joules, and charge is measured in coulombs. So one volt is one joule per coulomb. So one volt is a potential difference when one joule of energy is transferred per coulomb of charge. Okay? So I hope this definitions of current potential difference and resistance is clear to you. Now let us look at a few questions that can be asked related to these triangle. First is calculate the current flowing when four coulombs of charge flows for two minutes. Now you need to take care of the units. The units have to be in seconds. So current is charge over time. Charge is four coulombs times is two minutes. So times by 60 is 120 seconds. So the answer would be 0 0.033 amps. Calculate the energy transfer when two volts of potential difference create a charge of two coulomb. So energy is voltage per unit voltage times the charge. Our voltage is two the charge is two columns so the answer is four joules next is you need to calculate the resistance when potential difference is four and current is two so v over i gives two ohms next is charge when five amp current flows for five minutes again we need to convert five minutes into seconds and charges current times time so that becomes five times five times 60 which is 1500 coulombs and then calculate the potential difference when 10 joule of work is done to move the charge of five coulomb so remember i told you potential difference is energy per unit charge energy is 10 joule charge is five coulombs so that is two volts okay so i hope these examples how you need to use these triangles is crystal clear to you. Make sure you remember the triangles along with the units. Okay. 
All right, now this is a very important part. You need to draw voltage time current of any conductor or a resistor, a filament lamp, and a diode. Okay, now when we talk about a conductor, in a conductor, as the voltage increases, the current increases, there's a linear relationship. Okay, provided the temperature has to remain constant, and this is also known as Ohm's law. Now, for the filament lamp, it shows a linear relationship at the start but after that with further increase in voltage the graph curves up like this okay so as the voltage increases the current increases at the start but after the bulb gets heated an increase in temperature increases the resistance so the current do not increase as much with the increase in voltage and the graph curves so at this point there's an increase in temperature increasing the resistance making the graph curve as opposed to a conductor where there's a linear relationship okay so i hope you are clear with this shape and how you need to explain this shape next is a diode remember diode conducts electricity in one direction so there's a flat line in the reverse direction and diode needs a certain threshold voltage and then it starts to conduct the current so this point is your threshold voltage so diode conducts electricity in one direction in reverse direction the resistance is too high so no current flows when it reaches a threshold voltage the current start to increase and then it becomes a linear relationship okay so i hope these voltage time voltage current graphs are clear to you you should be able to sketch them in the exam and explain these shapes okay so now we need to do a series circuit and a parallel circuit in the series the resistance are connected next to each other in a parallel circuit they connected parallel the total resistance in a series circuit is the sum of the individual resistance, which is greater than the individual resistance. So R1 plus R2 is R total. The current across each component will be V over R. So total voltage over the total resistance, which is the sum of R1 plus R2, gives the current in, across the each component. And remember, in series, the current is always the same. So now you got the current by this formula. You can do I times R1 for the voltage across R1 and I times R2 for the voltage across R2. And that will give you the voltage across each component because the voltage gets divided according to the resistance. Now, in a parallel circuit, the total resistance is less than the individual. And the formula is R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. The voltage will remain constant across each. So the current will get divided and current will be the total voltage divided by R1. The current across two is the voltage across R2. Okay, I hope these formulas are clear to you. Remember, in a series, the current is same. In the parallel, the potential difference is same. Now, let's take an example. So, these two uh, resistance are given to you, 5 and 10 ohms with 20 volts. It's a series circuit. It's a parallel circuit. So, total resistance in case 1 will be 15 ohms, the sum of this. The voltage is 20 volts. So, the current flowing across each component will be voltage over resistance so 20 over 15 is 1.33 so we have 1.33 amps flowing across each resistor now we know potential is current time resistance so we'll do 1.33 times the resistance of each and we'll find the current flowing across each okay so that is six point uh, the voltage across each so that is 6.7 and 13.3 now in a parallel circuit the total resistance is r1 r2 over r1 plus r2 that gives us 3.33 the total current is total voltage divided by total resistance resistance which is 6 amps so 6 amps is the total current the voltage will be 20 volts across each component so we have the voltage and the resistance across each so current is voltage over the resistance so 20 over 5 is the 4 amps across the current across 5 ohms and across 10 ohms it is 2 and we'll add them that will add up to the total current of 6 amp okay so i hope how you do the calculation with series and parallel circuits is clear to you next is the uk's main supply if you talk about the uk's main supply you need to remember there's a 230 voltage and the frequency is 50 hertz this is a three pin plug which we see in all our home socket you need to know the components of each okay so can you see that three wires one is blue in color one is greenish yellow one is brown color the brown color wire is a live wire where the main current flows and the fuse is connected just to the live wire because if the current exceeds a threshold in the live wire, it breaks the circuit. Then you can see to the other side, to the left side goes a blue wire that is neutral wire in which no current flows and to a top pin, 
there's a greenish yellow wire and this is the earth wire which earth is the electric current and then there's a cable grip which is made up of an insulated material called plastic and it keeps all the wires in place and prevent them from touching all the pins are made up of uh brass and you need to remember that they're made up of brass as it's a good conductor and being an alloy it's resistant to corrosion so rather than making the pins for copper we make it for brass on the other hand the wires are made up of copper as they are good conductors of electricity so you should be able to label all these wires remember the colors and the function of each wire now there's another important triangle called power power is measured in watts which is energy per unit time and when we talk about electrical power that can be measured by either voltage times current and v can be written as ir according to the resistance triangle so another formula would be current square times r or i can be written as v over r so another formula is p equals v square over r okay so you need to remember all these three formulas and in the exam they can give you either voltage or current or resistance and current and ask you to find the power let's take an example you have to calculate the current produced by 200 volt bulb if generates a voltage of 10 volts okay so what is the formula of power power is current times voltage so what is our power our power is 200 watts our current we have to find so we divide it by voltage so the power will be 20 watts next is what is the best fuse for this appliance now what is is the current that is flowing in this the current is flowing is 20 amps so the fuse should be greater than that so 23 amps will be the useful fuse for this okay next is there are two types of current direct and electric current direct current flows in one direction you can see the graph is just a straight line it is a current in cells and batteries the alternating current the current switches on the direction and this is what is there in the main supply now what is a national grid a national grid is a network of tables and transformers that transmits electricity from a power station to homes and building so this is a generating station and you can see that we have used a step up transformer to increase the voltage to a very high level why because at a very high voltage the current reduces and the current has a lot of heating effects and that re results in the loss of energy so when you increase the voltage you reduces the current and that prevents the loss of energy due to heating effect of current but as soon as it needs to go to the customer or to the homes or the offices we use a step down transformers that decreases the voltage to 230 volts is that what we require so you should know why we use the step up transformer and step down transformer where do we use it and what is the function of this okay so now let's do the last point what is a static electricity electricity that is produced by rubbing because when we rub two objects there's a transfer of electrons from one surface to another the surface that loses an electron it becomes positively charged and the surface that gains an electron becomes a negatively charged okay and there's an electrostatic attraction if both charges are same and there's a repulsion if the charges are different so you can see here these are two positive they are repelling each other and if there's a negative and a positive they are attracting each other so like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other okay so i hope you know how the static electricity is produced now electric field is a line which always travels from positive to negative across any charge object there is a certain area where you can feel the force of the electricity and that is known as an electric field you should be able to draw these fields of lines if there's a positive charge they'll be directing away from positive and directing towards the negative and they always flows from positive to negative okay I hope this topic is clear to you. Now let us look at what are the key terms we saw in this topic. What's a current, charge, thermistor, resistor, cell and a battery, variable resistor, thermistor, diode, ammeter, voltmeter, potential difference, resistance, direct current, alternating current, live wire, earth wire, neutral wire, fuse, power and efficiency. You can pause this video, have a go over these key terms okay and then come back and check the answers all these key terms definitions you can find on my website the link is mentioned in the description box below now it's the time to test yourself okay so pause your video and try these questions you need to sketch and explain the voltage on the current graph of a resistor filament lamp and a diode what are the components of a three pin club what is the voltage and frequency of UK main supply and how do you calculate the efficiency of an appliance all right pause the video have a go 
and let's check your answers now. So this is a voltage current graph, linear relationship for a conductor, filament lamp, it will be curving, diode will be a straight line, and then it will be going up, okay? And you should be able to explain it as here there's an increase in temperature increasing the resistance, diode conduct electricity only in one direction and after the threshold is reached. Next is the main electricity. These are the components, earth wire, live wire, neutral wire, and fuse, and you should know the color and the function. And the UK main supply is 230 volts and 50 hertz. And to calculate the efficiency, we do the output power over input power times 100. Okay, as always, what's the next step? Check the specification, make sure everything which is there in the specification is clear to you and do exam questions on this topic, which you can find on my website. The link is shared with you in the description box below. If you like this video, then do subscribe to our channel and do not forget to click the bell icon because you will get notified as soon as I put a new video if you click on the bell icon. Okay, so if you need more notes on this topic and exam question, come to my website. The link is mentioned in the description box below. If you do like this video do let me know how do you find it and also if there's any specific topic you want me to make the video on leave a comment below and i'll make sure i'll make it before your exam so i'll see you next in the next video till then happy revising